So you'd like to get a tutoring business started in 2021, but you don't know where to start. In this video, I'm gonna share the five steps that you need to take in order to get your tutoring business started. Hey teachers, I'm Sonia Teach. I wanna help you start and grow a profitable online tutoring business so you can make more money while working less hours. If that sounds good to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I make a new video. The first step in the process of starting your, your online tutoring business is to find your tutoring niche. So what does that mean? Your tutoring niche is, is the subject area that you are you are teaching and personally I recommend to to keep it as specific as possible um, that being said I also want you to choose consider a niche that is in higher demand for example reading math and task preparation are three examples of high demand tutoring niches then once you've come up with a subject you also want to consider narrowing down the age levels that you're going to teach so a lot of teachers when they first get started with their tutoring business make the mistake of trying to teach everyone when really you should try to just narrow it down to be specific so that you can stand out as an expert in your field so for me personally i taught math to kids with adhd between third to eighth grade and most of my students were in middle schoolers so it really helped me to narrow down exactly what they were learning it made lesson planning easier it helped me to stand out as an expert and it also made marketing my tutoring business far easier because I had such a very specific niche. The second step to starting your online tutoring business is to choose your software and tools. Now, I wanna make it really easy for you, so I created a free resource with my favorite software and tools for tutoring online. And I'll share that link in the description below. But I'm gonna to just touch on a few right now. My favorite tool for video calling for the tutoring sessions is Zoom. I like it because it's free and it it's a very dependable software. Now they do have paid plans, so if you are planning to tutor group sessions of over with more than one student for 40 minutes or more, you will need to have a paid plan which starts at $14.99 per month. Um, but otherwise, you can get away with the free plan of Zoom. When I was when I was tutoring full time, I was only using the free plan because I was only doing one on one sessions. The second tool you're going to want to have is an online whiteboard software. This is especially helpful if you are teaching something like math. Um, an online whiteboard software is going to give you something where you can actually teach your lesson just like you would be teaching on a whiteboard. You might be teaching on a whiteboard if you were in a school. So I personally like the, the online whiteboard called Hey Hi, and I have another video about it that I will like link over here. Finally, you want a way to set up your lesson plans and stay organized. So I personally used Trello to keep track of all my lessons. When I had a session with a student, I would keep track of where they were at each date. I would tr keep track of how they were doing on Trello. And um, I also use Google Drive to, to have as a hub for all the files and things like that. And I have another video about that that I will link up here that you can watch after you watch this video. Finally, you want to set up your office. Setting up your office means having all the tools that you need to get started. So just like I shared with you my online tutoring software video, or my online tutoring software free resource, I have another free resource for you called the Top 10 Tools for Tutoring Online that's going to give you the specific equipment that you want to use in order to make your tutoring session successful. Um, I've personally been using the same webcam for the past three years and it works really well. I use a Logitech C920 um, and that is one of the items that's linked in this resource. So what do you think? Are you going to start a tutoring business in 2021? Tell me why or why not in the comments below. So step three is going to be to set your rates and policies. There are a few things to consider when you're setting your rates and policies. First of all, you have to decide how much to charge and this can be a struggle for tutors when they're first starting out because they want to be affordable, but they also want to charge a rate that is in line with their level of expertise. So it's kind of like a struggle to figure out what's the right price. And the truth is there is no perfect rate. There is no perfect price. It's really important that you're confident with whatever price that you set for yourself. So while I personally recommend that teachers start off charging at least 
certified teachers start off, certified or former teachers start off charging at least $40 per hour USD, you may not feel comfortable charging that much money. You may feel more comfortable charging 30 or 25 and that's up to you. Um, personally, all my, my, if you watch my videos, you will see that I talk a lot about charging a premium price for your tutoring services. And that means charging $50 per hour or more for your tutoring services. But sometimes we need to work up to that point. Um, something that you want to keep in mind is that you don't only want to think about, is this affordable for the person that I'm working with? But you also want to think about, is this able to, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Am I it going to be able to live the lifestyle I want to be living if I'm only charging, you know, $10 an hour. So you really want to crunch those numbers. And if you want a easy way to calculate the perfect tutoring rate, I actually have a resource called the Tutor Pricing Calculator. It's a paid resource in my Happy Online Tutor Shop that I will link in the description below. Then finally, you want to think about your policies, things like your cancellation policy, your scheduling policy, your payment collection policy. How are all those things going to look like when you are tutoring? You want to have those things set up and in place before you even get started in taking on students because a mistake that a lot of teachers make is that they wait until they've already established their business and then they think, now I need a cancellation policy. Now I need to figure out what happens if people cancel at the last minute or don't show up for a session. So I really recommend having all of that prepared ahead of time. So if you want to know what all my policies are and have my welcome letter that I send to parents, that I've sent to parents when I'm tutoring them, you can check out my tutoring contract template. This is also a paid resource in the Happy Online Tutor shop that I will link in the description below. The next step is to set up your systems. So the systems that you want to be setting up are the process for someone to get in touch with you and apply for tutoring. Now this is something that I don't, I haven't shared about on the channel before. Um, I do share about it with my customers and clients in the Four Figure Tutor Society, which is my monthly membership. What you want to be doing is you want to be able to give people a way to get in touch with you um, and apply for your tutoring services. I do not recommend, do not, do not, do not recommend having any, everyone and anyone having access to your personal calendar to be able to schedule time with you because then literally anyone can schedule that time and it makes it seem like you have just like, you know, anyone has access to you. So I really recommend instead that you have a tutoring application on your website. It can be very simple. Um, if you are just getting started, then the simpler the better, but you want to have just enough information to get a sense of uh, what that person is looking for and what they need. Um, and then from there you can set up a process for how you reach out, follow up with that parent and how you um, handle that conversation back and forth um, to finally lead into the consultation. Now, I don't recommend having a free lesson for students. I know a lot of teachers feel the need to give away free lessons. I don't recommend that. Um, instead, I recommend that you have a free consultation, which is basically just like, you know, if you were the, the tutoring client, then we would come, we would meet together over Zoom, we would discuss your child's needs, and we would determine if working together would be a good fit for each of us. And I say a good fit for each of us because even if the parent feels like you're a good for, fit for them, that doesn't necessarily mean that you feel like you're, they're a good fit for you. So it has to be a two-way street. Next, you want to think about your payment collection process. Do you want to be collecting payment in advance? For me personally, I was billing on a month-to-month -month basis just because that made the whole bookkeeping process work a lot easier and it helped me to stay organized with the different students that I had. You may not feel comfortable charging people on a monthly basis. Maybe instead you charge people on a weekly basis. Um, something I did when I first got started was build every Sunday for sessions so people were still getting charged before the session actually happened. And that was really important because as part of my policies, if they had a late cancellation or they just didn't show up for the session, they wouldn't get a refund. And that worked in my favor because otherwise, if you haven't collected payment and the people didn't show up for the session, you could be missing out on a lot of money that way. And it's going to really hurt your business in the long run because you want to make sure that you're generating a, as consistent of an income as possible. So for you as the business owner, those are some things that you want to be thinking about. 
Um, and then finally, you want to have a scheduling process. What kind of software are you going to use for scheduling? And how are people going to be able to schedule their appointments with you? Is it going to be a reoccurring meeting every, you know, Tuesday at 3.30 that they set up, they set up with you? Or is it going to be as needed? Those are also some things to think about when you're setting up the systems. The next step is to start finding students. I know this is probably the, the part that you've been waiting for, is actually finding your first students. So I have a lot of resources for you. Um, I have a playlist about how to find students to tutor that you can, um, I'll link above, and you can watch that after you watch this video. I'll also link it in the description below. And that is gonna help you to find your first students online. I'm not gonna get too much into detail into that, that to, into how to find your students in this video because that can that's a whole nother conversation to have. There are different strategies that I recommend for you in terms of using social media and things like that. So I just want to make it super simple and direct you to that playlist for you to watch so you can start finding your first students. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!